Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, however you're watching this video. We celebrate today one of our great feasts and the Feast of the Holy Trinity, the very heart of our faith. Let's listen to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'd like to speak a little bit today about the um, circumstances in our nation. As you can well imagine, to try to encapsulate this uh, very huge and complex topic in six or seven minutes is impossible. I can't say everything about the conflict that we've seen on our televisions and across our cities. So I hope that you'll be patient and recognize that when you want to just say, hey, you should have said this, that I can't say everything. So uh, I want to begin the reflection on that gospel and this Feast of the Holy Trinity by uh, sharing a story that I've shared before about with the way the world is today. I, it's a story that's come back and it's heavy on my heart. It includes the details of my last conversation with my mother uh, and I've been thinking about that conversation now four years since her death. As you might know, my mother uh, uh, suffered from dementia, leaving her in an often confused state near the end of her life, and uh, therefore a confusion for those who loved her. Well, the morning of our last conversation, my mom was particularly, uh, shall we say, ornery, and um, we discovered later the reason for that was because she had been in pain because of a fall she had taken, but she wasn't even able to express herself. So while we sat and ate breakfast, uh, she was particularly unsettled. And what I can only attribute as a moment of the Holy Spirit, I felt moved to say to, to my mother, Mom, you look beautiful. But first she looked at me with increased confusion at the words, and so I said it again, you look beautiful. This she got angry with my confusing words. And so I said it a third time, you are so beautiful. And then she stopped and she looked at me in, in her confused manner and, and maybe a bit more gentle. She said, why are you saying that to me? But well, I always wondered about what touched uh, her heart as she felt the response of why are you saying that I'm beautiful? What had left her somehow unwilling or unable to accept that truth uh, for each of us, not just because my mom was beautiful, but because she's created in God's image. Well, of course, her health condition was one that left her in a state of inability to always understand, but I believe also that her experience is very much ours and it's the experience of much of the world that we're ready to, uh, for a fight specifically because we do not believe that we are beloved. For my mother's problem is one that's widely shared, and I'd like to suggest as we watch TV this week that the world's problem is that the world has dementia. It's forgotten that it's beloved. Well, from the experience of isolation of a viral pandemic, our nation has quickly erupted into another kind of pandemic, one of anger and violence. The match that lit the conflagration was that brutal killing of a single soul, a precious soul, George Floyd in Minnesota. Yet it is not meant as an offense to wonder with so many other people murdered or other people's lives ending in our country last week, what happened that with this one in a particular way? Just what happened there? Well, some have wondered, why focus on that one? Well, I'd like to offer a different perspective. I'd like us to look right into the face of that example as a representative of all the offenses against life and the confused place that tempts each human heart that we're not beloved to fall to that temptation. Perhaps the most alarming thing about George Floyd's death is that all the doubts of each human heart seem to be have confirmed in his last eight and a half minutes of his life when he was asphyxiated by a lack of love. In the end, it was confirmed for him he was not beloved, and that is alarming. Well, it's indisputable that there are many reasons why individuals, in fact, all of us, are tempted to doubt that we're beloved and have given in to that message that we hear and then we respond in anger. For anger is how we react to an untruth. So as to my mother, I must speak the truth. And here's the truth for all of our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might have life 
but not perish. Or in the short form, you are beloved of God. It is the answer to the confusion, to the dementia of the world that is forgotten, that is beloved. And so I say again, you are beloved. Maybe that makes you angry, as if it's too easy of an answer to the world's problems, and maybe even an unrealistic answer. So I'll say it again. No, you're beloved. God so loved you and loved the whole world that he gave his only son, that everyone might have full eternal life beginning even now. The single answer to the confused time for all of us is to speak the truth. Each human being, whatever color his or her skin, whatever his background, whatever has happened to her, whatever she believes, whatever he holds, is beloved. It's when we doubt that that the result is confusion and anger. When we accept it, though, the result is freedom and peace. Well, I've not finished the story about my mother. After breakfast finished, we headed for the parking lot, my parents back home and me back to Iowa. One last time I said to my mother, I love you, and she, in her astonishing moment of clarity from her dementia, looked at me and said, I know you do, I love you too. Friends, let's keep at it. In the face of anger and doubt about the deepest truth of each of our lives, let's not return anger for anger. The problems of the world seem overwhelming and unsolvable. Hope is elusive until we remember that what we can do is to relate to that single person right in front of us, one person at a time, and show that person that they are beloved. And when it is met with doubt, let us not return doubt for doubt. When it's met with anger, let's not return anger for anger. In all things, let us respond with love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son to show and convince us the depth of, heart, of the heart of God that we are beloved. The world suffers from dementia. We cannot recall how and why we were created out of love and for love. But once we can accept this truth, the divine truth of love, only then can we share it with others and heal their dementia. This is the single and sole healing for this most confused world. God bless our world.